Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business lead, Kaplan. This is with me here today He's with Smizer, Kaplan, and Veselka, and always enjoy talking to him. We talked a lot about political stuff because it's that time of the year. It will be through November, uh, but uh, and I think you actually have uh, great uh, information and insight. Uh, it's just a perspective. If you want to see really screwed up uh, examinations of what's happening on the political front, watch the Sunday shows with all those pundits. Those guys are rarely, if ever, correct. And so I think you do pretty well, uh, Lee. But let's talk about some stuff that's actually happened that uh, has an impact on my audience here, our audience here. Talk a little bit, uh, first of all, about changes in laws when it comes to dealing with contract employees. And I well, used to, I, I said a poor expression, those who are contract versus employees. The, the Department of Labor has issued some new guidance, if that's the right word, and, and this has been in only the last month, I believe. And it is uh, assistance for workers and small businesses on what is an independent contractor. And quite candidly, the, the factors that it's set out I think, uh, and it's, it says these are the ones the Supreme Court thinks are significant, I think are a real warning to smaller, particularly smaller employers who don't have in-house counsel and don't have the time to really go over this. The pe- people you might have thought were independent contractors may not be if the Department of Labor decides otherwise. There's a question as to whether the workers' services are an integral part of the employer's business. In other words, if you are supervising a lot of independent contractors and they are performing a lot of important services to your business, you may be in trouble. Uh, The permanency of the relationship, in other words, how long have you been using this purported independent contractor and whether the worker is invested in facilities or, or equipment. Uh, whether they use their own tools or equipment or equipment supplied by you, the, the company that's hiring the independent contractor. And this is very important, the nature and degree of control by the company. Who decides on what hours of work? Does the worker work for other companies? In other words, if you hire an independent contractor and they end up working almost exclusively for you, much bigger chance that they'll be considered your employee. And there's a question about the worker's opportunities for profit or loss. Does the worker invest in insurance or bonding? Can they earn a profit by performing a job more efficiently or exercising managerial skill? And then there's a question about just the level of skill required in performing a job and how much initiative is involved. If if, uh, the worker really doesn't advertise independently and is just performing routine tasks regarding requiring little training, much bigger chance that they'll be regarded as your employee. And when that happens, of course, you're subjected to all the rules uh, that relate to compensation and uh, uh, withholding and all the other rules that apply to employees. So uh, this is clearly something that the Obama administration is interested in, and I think it's questionable whether it'll ever be rolled back, even if the Republicans take the presidency in the next election. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage people to go to the Department of Labor website and or do a search for something like guidance on independent contractors. And there are various uh, blogs about it, there are articles about it, and there's the Department of Labor's own regulations, or it's quote-unquote guidance. Yeah. So, even if someone... Uh, even if something so, that I think is a real issue. Even if someone doesn't have legal counsel, it sounds like it makes sense for them to uh, uh, have at least a meeting, spend, you know, spend a little mo- money and a little time with an attorney to figure out exactly whether or not they're in compliant and what they need to do to get compliant. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, absolutely. And th- this is not something that we normally do, so I'm not advertising for our law firm by any means. But, yeah. but uh, I think the Department of Labor actually did this in mid-July. And, um, you know, you're going to be subjected to the Fair Labor Standards Act if somebody is your employee and not an independent contractor. And that's uh, really an important issue. So that's one thing I think is a a really a big deal that medium and smaller businesses need to pay attention to. 
Another b- issue that hits really close to home is what's going on with the Hero, the Hero Ordinance, the uh, human, the, what's it called, the uh, human. Equal human rights. equal rights yeah, ordinance, human e- or, or as some people call it, the bathroom ordinance. The bathroom uh, ordinance, depending that's on the your name on that your... The, its opponents have given it, and um, it's going to have an effect on our election. Uh, it will bring out uh, more committed voters on either side of the issue, and I don't think that any of the pollsters uh, really know how it will affect the election. We really, I think, have. Two candidates who have, uh, are probably opposed to the hero ordinance, uh, Ben Hall, who's pretty vocal, and uh, Bill King, who's not very vocal, but I think has at least in some way signified that he's opposed to the ordinance. And uh, then the other candidates are probably range in their degree of support of it, but I think in general would be perceived as supporters. Bill King is perceived as probably the more conservative of those two. So he almost has no, in my opinion. Uh, um, and so I think, you know, he almost has to if he wants to appeal to that particular base. Houston is Well, just, on fiscal issues, yes. uh, he's perceived probably as more conservative because yeah. he's written a number of articles in the Chronicle about our pension overhang and, and all those issues. And... Uh, that's come to the forefront, and it probably didn't hurt him that uh, Laura and John Arnold have have become fairly public and high profile in their discussion of this issue as is a real problem. Mm-hmm. And um, other candidates have probably steered away from it. Sylvester Turner, who has the endorsement of the municipal unions, is probably the person that most people would perceive as least likely to reform or change the system. Houston's perceived as a, you know, as, as a conservative or a Republican town, but the reality is that, it, is that it is not a Republican town. Harris County is a Republican county, but it's not a Republican town. It really isn't. It hasn't been for a long time. But this, there's a real a high possibility, I think, that this bill could shake things up in, in uh, that respect. And it would be a lot of people well, like that. You know, ben, I, it's interesting. I would say that Harris County is sort of uh, reddish-purple, and Houston is bluish-purple. And it's close, and turnout matters. Yeah, it Um, does. My recollection is that Obama carried the quote-unquote city precinct, precinct, but the Republicans carried the county as a whole. Right. But that's close, very close. And uh, in this election, you're going to have, obviously, certain communities, the gay community is going to, is going to come out strongly in this election. But I think people on the West Side uh, who are perceived as more conservative, to the extent that Houston in- includes those neighborhoods, are also going to turn out. And I think they generally have pretty high turnout levels. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to see what happens and who makes the runoff. I, I'd be afraid to handicap it. Yeah, in, in your gut, what happens to the Hero Ordinance? I think in my gut, the hero ordinance is approved. Adrian Garcia and Sylvester Turner make the runoff. But my confidence level wow. in that is such that I certainly would not bet on any of those things. Yeah, yeah. You, you learned from your Hillary experience in 2008. <laughs> well, that was a real departure from, I never bet on things, but that was a real departure. Uh, <laughs> and then you remembered why you never yeah, bet on but, things, But right? it looked to me like there was... It was an absolute desert of, of potential opponents. Obama had virtually no experience and was so untested that I thought he had no chance. And on the Republican side, uh, you know, they were already riven by internal ideological conflicts, and and nobody knew who'd get the nomination. So I thought she was sure to roll to a win, particularly given her uh, support from uh, minority groups and women. And uh, we see what happened. She ended up losing because she got attacked from the left. She of all places. From the left because she didn't oppose the second Iraq war strongly enough. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, and by late 2007 or mid-2007, Barack Obama was still saying it was ludicrous that someone with such limited experience would even run for the White House. And so I think your bet was probably a pretty safe one. So things did change, and it's hard. Politics is weird because, you know, it involves people. 
and people can change on a dime, and so it's really you know, hard to keep up with that. Candidly, it's it's interesting to me. Senators generally have fared worse than governors in attempting to become president, and because when you're senator, you have no real experience actually running something, right? Whereas generally, governors had to run something. People such as Ronald Reagan and and Bush, uh, the uh, Bush forty three. And, uh, of course, Bill Clinton, well, you know, they could say Arkansas was a small state, but he was a governor. He was not a glass Senators governor. don't fare as well, uh, unless they have something really going for them. John Kennedy was a fresh face and looked better in the debates. Obama came in upon a soured electorate, soured by the recession and by the difficulties of the Iraq war. And uh, just it's interesting, but in general, people seem to, at least in the past, have looked for somebody with true administrative experience. And whether that will matter in this next election with so much uh, media, it's hard to say. Yeah, uh, to prove to your point, you mentioned that only two senators in the last 50 years, uh, to actually almost 55 years, to be elected president from the U.S. Senate, John F. Kennedy and Barack Obama. It virtually never happens. And, you know, and there's an old cliche that I'm sure was developed by a governor, which is, is uh, senators talk and governors do. And I think that's a sentiment the voters have as well. <laughs> well, uh, there may be something to that. Uh, of course, one of the presidents who got the most done wasn't elected that way. He had been a senator, Lyndon yep. Johnson, but he, of course, ascended because of the Kennedy assassination. So, and he know, leveraged I, that. Who knows what people think now? And he leveraged that assassination or, or the, you know, the tragedy uh, to get so much done. You know, a lot of stuff was done in John F. Kennedy's name under the Lyndon Johnson administration. Uh, so, uh, no question about that. He was an, a very effective president, uh, even if you disagreed with what he did, like I largely would, uh, you, I, I can't help but look at him and say, he was actually, uh, in terms of accomplishment, the second most effective after uh, FDR. And you saw how long it took FDR to get all that he got accomplished with an even more compliant Congress. So Johnson well, was an Johnson incredible was chief executive. force of nature he at was. a time when we did not face national emergencies. Right. I mean, Franklin Roosevelt faced national emergencies. Obama uh, got things done with a very standoffish attitude because he could argue that he was making a complete break with uh, failed economic policies and a failed war. That was his argument, and uh, uh, quote-unquote hope and change ended up meaning some things truly were changed. Yeah, they were. So, All right, that's an interesting note to end on. Lee Kaplan, Smeisler, Smeisler Kaplan, and Veselka. And that website, skv.com. We went extra long because it was extra worth it. Thanks so much, my friend. Great. Well, I look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. All right, when we come back, much more for you right here on The Price of Business. Ring, my friend, if that makes you feel all right. I'll get you anything, my friend, if that makes you feel all right. Because I 